Welcome to the fifth instalment of the CADFEM tutorials for ANSYS. Our purpose today is to perform a rudimentary evaluation of some bolts and to address questions such as what is relevant to our purpose, what dimensions are important, what is the procedure we should follow, and what do we need to look out for when dealing with static and dynamic loading conditions. When it comes to evaluating the strength of the bolts used for our flange connection, it doesn't make sense to carry out a stress test on the bolts themselves which is why details used to define tension, such as, for example, thread termination, are not contained within our geometry model, as a result of which this geometry model cannot calculate the correct tension. What do we do instead? We calculate the relevant cutting conditions corresponding to guideline 2230 of the German Association of Engineers. In our first step, we only want to refer to the forces which arise. You could do the same again to calculate torque. We drag the boundary condition, the bolt pretension, onto solution, which brings us three additional results in terms of the forces exerted on the bolts. Let's update the results, and then we can again evaluate the bolts individually. By way of reminder, we had said that here at the top on the tensile side, a slight gap had appeared. Here on the compression side of the global flexion, the components are lying against each other. If we look at the associated forces that occur within the bolts, you can see that on the tensile side, the 20 kN preload, which we set here as the boundary condition, a 20 kN pretension, results in a bolt force of 21.99, i.e. 22 kN, as a result of the external load. With respect to the bolt in the neutral phase of flexion, 20 kN turns into 20.15 kN, so it's just a slight increase. On the compression side, a 20 kN pretension turns into a 19.9 kN bolt force. So when it comes to evaluating the strength of the bolt at maximum tension, the relevant value here on the tensile side would be 22 kN. The interesting thing is what we see when there is dynamic loading. That would be the case, for example, if the force applied to our flange connection here at the front were dynamic as opposed to static. To be more specific, the dynamic portion comprises the increase from 20 kN to 22 kN, and this leads to the bolt becoming fatigued. The less this pretension, the more this portion increases. That means that alongside the loading condition which we calculated here, with a maximum pretension of 20 kN, here in the second loading condition, we have to include the tightening factor. The tightening factor represents the relationship between maximum and minimum pretension. So with a bolt pretension of 2.5, instead of a maximum pretension of 20 kN, we end up with a minimum of 8 kN and we would do that for all the bolts, and then calculate the second loading condition. Then, in corresponding fashion, we can instigate calculation of the forces here too, and then you can see that on the tensile side, the force of 8 kN increases to 13.9, or about 14 kN. In other words, the 14 kN is of course less than the 22 kN, as the pretension is far less. The increase from 8 to 14 is, however, clearly higher than the 2 kN under the loading condition that uses pretension alone. Let's make the comparison again. It goes up from 20 kN to 22 kN, and from a pretension of 8 kN. The bolt force goes up to 13.9 kN, up to 14 kN. So it goes up 6 kN, and this is critical for the dynamic loading, and also with respect to the fatigue of the bolt. Therefore, in the case of dynamically loaded bolts, it's important to calculate two loading conditions, one with the maximum pretension, in this case equating to 20 kN, and then we get the maximum force, which is critical for the static strength, here 22 kN, and then we must calculate a second loading condition, just as we see here and reduce the bolt pretension in this second loading condition so that we then get the portion containing the biggest increase, 
which is then pertinent to the dynamic loading of the bolt. As already mentioned, the same also applies to the torque that arises in this situation. Strictly speaking, you ought to additionally take into account the torsional stress. You can even use Excel to do this. It is important to note that bolts require a particular approach in order to achieve an outcome that has a high degree of certainty and reliability. The big advantage is that we've been able to create a precise illustration of the rigidity of the flange. This type of multi-bolted assembly is very easy using the finite element method, when compared to manual calculation. Nonetheless, you have to perform a correct evaluation in keeping with German Association of Engineers specification VDI 2230 in order to get a reliable outcome. That's why here at CADFEM we're carrying out a process of verification that will facilitate automated analysis in keeping with this specification, actually within Workbench itself.